Integrins are transmembrane receptors that are the bridges for cell cell and cell extracellular matrix interactions. When triggered, integrins in turn trigger chemical pathways to the interior, such as the chemical composition and mechanical status of the ECM, which results in a response such as regulation of the cell cycle, cell shape, and or motility. Or new receptors being added to the cell membrane. This allows rapid and flexible responses to events at the cell surface, for example to signal platelets to initiate an interaction with coagulation factors. There are several types of integrins, and a cell may have several types on its surface. Integrins are found in all metazoa. Integrins work alongside other receptors such as cadherins, the immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules. Selectins and syndicans to mediate cellar eurocell and cellar euromatrix interaction. Ligands for integrins include fibronectin, vitronectin, collagen, and laminin. Structure Integrins have two different chains, the I plus or minus and I squared subunits, and are called obligate heterodimers. In mammals, there are 18 I plus or minus and 8 I squared subunits. In Drosophila 5i plus or minus and 2i squared subunits, and in Kenrhabditis nematodes 2i plus or minus subunits and 1i squared subunit. The i plus or minus and i squared subunits each penetrate the plasma membrane and possess small cytoplasmic domains. Variants of some of the subunits are formed by differential RNA splicing. For example, four variants of the beta-1 subunit exist. Through different combinations of the I plus or minus and I squared subunits, around 24 unique integrins are generated. Integrin subunits span the cell membrane and have short cytoplasmic domains of 40 a euro 70 amino acids. The exception is the beta 4 subunit, which has a cytoplasmic domain of 1088 amino acids, one of the largest known cytoplasmic domains of any membrane protein. Outside the cell membrane, the I plus or minus and I squared chains lie close together along a length of about 23 nanometers. The final 5 nanometers N termini of each chain forms a ligand binding region for the ECM. They have been compared to lobster claws, although they don't actually pinch their ligand, they chemically interact with it at the insides of the tips of their pinchers. The molecular mass of the integrin subunits can vary from 90 kda to 160 kda. Beta subunits have four cystine rich repeated sequences. Both I plus or minus and I squared subunits bind several divalent cations. The role of divalent cations in the I plus or minus subunit is unknown, but may stabilize the folds of the protein. The cations in the I squared subunits are more interesting, they are directly involved in coordinating at least some of the ligands that integrins bind. There are various ways of categorizing the integrins. For example, a subset of the I plus or minus chains has an additional structural element inserted toward the end terminal, the alpha A domain. Integrins carrying this domain either bind to collagens, or act as cell cell adhesion molecules. This I plus or minus I domain is the binding site for ligands of such integrins. Those integrins that don't carry this inserted domain also have an A domain in their ligand binding site, but this A domain is found on the I squared subunit. In both cases, the A domains carry up to three divalent cation binding sites. One is permanently occupied in physiological concentrations of divalent cations, and carries either a calcium or magnesium ion, the principal divalent cations in blood at median concentrations of 1.4 mm and 0.8 mm. The other two sites become occupied by cations when ligands bind a euro at least for those ligands involving an acidic amino acid in their interaction sites. An acidic amino acid features in the integrin interaction site of many ECM proteins, for example as part of the amino acid sequence arginine glycine aspartic acid. Equal structure equals, despite many years of effort, discovering the high resolution structure of integrins proved to be challenging, membrane proteins are classically difficult to purify, and integrins are also large, complex and linked to many sugar trees. Low resolution images of detergent extracts of intact integrin PEBIA, obtained using electron microscopy, 
and even data from indirect techniques that investigate the solution properties of integrons using ultracentrifugation and light scattering, were combined with fragmentary high-resolution crystallographic or NMR data from single or paired domains of single integrin chains, and molecular models postulated for the rest of the chains. Despite these wide-ranging efforts, the X-ray crystal structure obtained for the complete extracellular region of one integrin, I plus or minus phi squared 3, was a surprise. It showed the molecule to be folded into an inverted V-shape that potentially brings the ligand binding sites close to the cell membrane. Perhaps more importantly, the crystal structure was also obtained for the same integrin bound to a small ligand containing the RGD sequence, the drug sealing itide. As detailed above, this finally revealed why divalent cations are critical for RGD ligand binding to integrins. The interaction of such sequences with integrins is believed to be a primary switch by which ECM exerts its effects on cell behavior. The structure poses many questions, especially regarding ligand binding and signal transduction. The ligand binding site is directed towards the C-terminal of the integrin, the region where the molecule emerges from the cell membrane. If it emerges orthogonally from the membrane, the ligand binding site would apparently be obstructed, especially as integrin ligands are typically massive and well cross-linked components of the ECM. In fact, little is known about the angle that membrane proteins subtend to the plane of the membrane. This is a problem difficult to address with available technologies. The default assumption is that they emerge rather like little lollipops, but the evidence for this sweet supposition is noticeable by its absence. The integrin structure has drawn attention to this problem, which may have general implications for how membrane proteins work. It appears that the integrin transmembrane helices are tilted, which hints that the extracellular chains may also not be orthogonal with respect to the membrane surface. Although the crystal structure changed surprisingly little after binding to sealing itide, the current hypothesis is that integrin function involves changes in shape to move the ligand binding site into a more accessible position, away from the cell surface, and this shape change also triggers intracellular signaling. There is a wide body of cell biological and biochemical literature that supports this view. Perhaps the most convincing evidence involves the use of antibodies that only recognize integrins when they have bound to their ligands, or are activated. As the footprint that an antibody makes on its binding target is roughly a circle about 3 nanometers in diameter, the resolution of this technique is low. Nevertheless, these so-called LIBS antibodies unequivocally show that dramatic changes in integrin shape routinely occur. However, how the changes detected with antibodies look on the structure is still unknown. Equals activation equals, when released into the cell membrane. Newly synthesized integrin dimers are speculated to be found in the same bent conformation revealed by the structural studies described above. One school of thought claims that this bent form prevents them from interacting with their ligands, although bent forms can predominate in high resolution M structures of integrin bound to an ECM ligand. Therefore, at least in biochemical experiments, integrin dimers must apparently not be unbent in order to prime them and allow their binding to the ECM. In cells, the priming is accomplished by a protein talon, which binds to the I-squared tail of the integrin dimer and changes its conformation. The I plus or minus and I-squared integrin chains are both class I transmembrane proteins, they pass the plasma membrane as single transmembrane alpha helices. Unfortunately, the helices are too long, and recent studies suggest that, for integrin P by a, they are tilted with respect both to one another and to the plane of the membrane. Talon binding alters the angle of tilt of the I squared 3 chain transmembrane helix in model systems, and this may reflect a stage in the process of inside out signaling which primes integrins. Moreover, talon proteins are able to dimerize and thus are thought to intervene in the clustering of integrin dimers, which leads to the formation of a focal adhesion. Recently, the kindlin-1 and kindlin-2 proteins have also been found to interact with integrin and activate it. Function Integrins have two main functions, attachment of the cell to the ECM, signal transduction from the ECM to the cell, however, they are also involved in a wide range of other biological activities, including immune patrolling, cell migration, 
and binding to cells by certain viruses, such as adenovirus, echovirus, hantavirus, and foot and mouth disease viruses. A prominent function of the integrins is seen in the molecule PIA, an integrin on the surface of blood platelets responsible for attachment to fibrin within a developing blood clot. This molecule dramatically increases its binding affinity for fibrin fibrinogen through association of platelets with exposed collagens in the wound site. Upon association of platelets with collagen, PIA changes shape allowing it to bind to fibrin and other blood components to form the clot matrix and stop blood loss. Equals attachment of cell to the ECM equals, integrins couple the ECM outside a cell to the cytoskeleton inside the cell. Which ligand in the ECM the integrin can bind to is defined by which I plus or minus and I squared subunits the integrin is made of. Among the ligands of integrins are fibronectin, vitronectin, collagen, and laminin. The connection between the cell and the ECM may help the cell to endure pulling forces without being ripped out of the ECM. The ability of a cell to create this kind of bond is also of vital importance in ontogeny. Cell attachment to the ECM is a basic requirement to build a multicellular organism. Integrins are not simply hooks, but give the cell critical signals about the nature of its surroundings. Together with signals arising from receptors for soluble growth factors like VEGF, EGF, and many others, they enforce a cellular decision on what biological action to take, be it attachment, movement, death, or differentiation. Thus integrins lie at the heart of many cellular biological processes. The attachment of the cell takes place through formation of cell adhesion complexes, which consist of integrins and many cytoplasmic proteins such as talin, vinculin, paxillin, and alpha-actinin. These act by regulating kinases such as FAK and SRC kinase family members to phosphorylate substrates such as P130CAS thereby recruiting signaling adapters such as CRK. These adhesion complexes attach to the actin cytoskeleton. The integrins thus serve to link two networks across the plasma membrane the extracellular ECM and the intracellular actin filamentous system. Integrin alpha 6 beta 4 is an exception, it links to the keratin intermediate filament system in epithelial cells. Focal adhesions are large molecular complexes, which are generated following interaction of integrins with ECM, then their clustering. The clusters likely provide sufficient intracellular binding sites to permit the formation of stable signaling complexes on the cytoplasmic side of the cell membrane. So the focal adhesions contain integrin ligand, integrin molecule, and associate plaque proteins. Binding is propelled by changes in free energy. As previously stated, these complexes connect the extracellular matrix to actin bundles. Cryoelectron tomography reveals that the adhesion contains particles on the cell membrane with diameter of 25 plus 5 nanometers and spaced at approximately 45 nanometers. Treatment with Rho kinase inhibitor Y27632 reduces the size of the particle, and it is extremely mechanosensitive. One important function of integrins on cells and tissue culture is their role in cell migration. Cells adhere to a substrate through their integrins. During movement, the cell makes new attachments to the substrate at its front and concurrently releases those at its rear. When released from the substrate, integrin molecules are taken back into the cell by endocytosis. They are transported through the cell to its front by the endocytic cycle, where they are added back to the surface. In this way they are cycled for reuse, enabling the cell to make fresh attachments at its leading front. It is not yet clear whether cell migration in tissue culture is an artifact of integrin processing, or whether such integrin-dependent cell migration also occurs in living organisms. Equals signal transduction equals, integrins play an important role in cell signaling by modulating the cell signaling pathways of transmembrane protein kinases such as receptor tyrosine kinases. While the interaction between integrin and receptor tyrosine kinases originally was thought of as unidirectional and supportive, recent studies indicate that integrins have additional, multifaceted roles in cell signaling. Integrins can regulate the receptor tyrosine kinase signaling by recruiting specific adapters to the plasma membrane. For example, 
I squared 1C Integron recruits GAB 1 slash SHP2 and presents SHP2 to IGF1R, resulting in dephosphorylation of the receptor. In a reverse direction, when a receptor tyrosine kinase is activated, integrins co-localize at focal adhesion with the receptor tyrosine kinases and their associated signaling molecules. The repertoire of integrins expressed on a particular cell can specify the signaling pathway due to the differential binding affinity of ECM ligands for the integrins. The tissue stiffness and matrix composition can initiate specific signaling pathways regulating cell behavior. Clustering and activation of the integrins act in complexes strengthen the focal adhesion interaction and initiate the framework for cell signaling through assembly of adhesomes. Depending on the integrin's regulatory impact on specific receptor tyrosine kinases, the cell can experience cell growth, cell division, cell survival, cellular differentiation, and apoptosis. Knowledge of the relationship between integrins and receptor tyrosine kinase has laid a foundation for new approaches to cancer therapy. Specifically, Targeting integrins associated with RTKs is an emerging approach for inhibiting angiogenesis. Vertebrate integrins, the following are some of the integrins found in vertebrates, beta-1 integrins interact with many alpha integrin chains. Gene knockouts of integrins in mice are not always lethal, which suggests that during embryonal development, one integrin may substitute its function for another in order to allow survival. Some integrins are on the cell surface in an inactive state, and can be rapidly primed, or put into a state capable of binding their ligands, by cytokines. Integrins can assume several different well-defined shapes or conformational states. Once primed, the conformational state changes to stimulate ligand binding, which then activates the receptors a euro also by inducing a shape change a euro to trigger outside and signal transduction. References External links, media related to integrins at Wikimedia Commons, Mbenfo, Integrin Mediated Signaling, Mbenfo, Integrin Activation, Eukaryotic Linear Motif Resource Motif Class Lig RGD, Eukaryotic Linear Motif Resource Motif Class Lig Integrin ISODG01, The Integrin Protein, Tallinn Substrate for Calpana Euro PMAP The Proteolysis Map Animation Integrins at the U.S. National Library of Medicine Medical Subject Headings